do you live and work in Ottawa usually? Yes. Awesome. And so, um, so how many have you been here in the park? A week. And so you didn't join from the beginning? No, I had full, uh, full intentions of joining, but uh, I had to get some money together to get resources to stay here. And once I did, I set up. And, and what do you do usually? I, I'm a cider. I do a, a soft and fascia vinyl siding. Okay, so for houses and... Yeah, yeah, residential, 10th uh, line in Innis, and they've got Avalon going up, lots of houses there. And so how does your life, like how do you manage with your other occupations and still being here and living here? I have a lot of friends in the city, so uh, taking a shower is not a problem. Uh, if it gets too cold or I just want a warm bed for the night, that's also not a problem. So it's convenient, I have a lot of friends here. And do you still go to work? Of course, yeah, yeah. It's seasonal, like it slows down during the winter. They don't dig during the winter, so they're not building houses. But yeah, there's always work. So, so what's a typical day like when you have to work? Let's see, how? I catch the bus, go to Orleans, I'll get picked up by my uh, crewmate, and go to work. Drop me off, I'll catch the bus back in, participate in the occupation here. And do you tell them that you do that? And if so, what do they tell you? Oh, they're, they're, my friends and family are behind me. I mean, um, there's serious uh, points and um, issues that need to be addressed that uh, the occupation is, uh, is bringing awareness to the people about. Um, and I believe in them 100%. I stand by them 100%. Um, you know, the poverty in the world. Uh, what is it, 35,000 children starving to death every day. These are just completely unnecessary, and especially while we pay full-grown men, you know, trillions in sports contracts, NBA, MLB, FIFA, you name it, while kids starve to death. I mean, it's just so much common sense points that, you know, and we plan on going to Mars in 2017. I mean, why can't we plan to feed the world by 2017? I mean, it's 21 billion to feed the world a year, and we spend hundreds and hundreds of billions in just our defenses, you know, to build guns and tanks. So just got to get our priorities straight and that's why I'm here to bring awareness to people about this so, mm -hmm. it's a trouble, troublesome issue here. Yeah. yeah and so tell me about your tent and how you set up all right yeah um, I got a four season tent I come across uh, an army surplus guy who has like 15 20 of these like really cheap um, but they're specifically designed for uh, miners um, people who go looking for uh, mineral mines and uh, so it's, it was a steel I grabbed it this is uh, uh, mine and my buddies, my uh, Richie, also was here from day one. He helped basically build the camp. Um, he's the one who kind of copes me to come in here too, you know, to get everything going. Um, he built this living room. Uh, everyone can come in during the winter and use it as such to keep warm. We've got tables in there, chairs. Uh, we're going to have a little ventilation system so we can have some candles in there and won't be too mucky, you know, the air won't be too nasty. Yeah. Hmm. So, so you're how, how can I say that? I'm trying to translate from French to English in my head, but like you're um, like you're all ready for winter, basically. Like, oh, yeah, like you prepared. designed all your tent and your yeah, we we prepared for this. We prepared for this. We plan on staying for the winter. Um, it's a very important issue, um, and I mean, there was one thing with winter loot coming where we may have to move. Um, again, I feel that you know, starving children are far more important than lights and carvings of ice. Um, but anyways, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we plan on staying for the winter, and we're gonna do it, do it all the way, long haul. <laughs> and how do you, how are you going to keep warm, like in the tent? Like um, I got tea lights, uh, tea candles. Um, that that that's effective. Um, obviously, we don't want to use um, too much candles. There is a risk. Hazards, but we're in a public space, uh, so we have to be uh, responsible, uh, conscious of that. Um, but uh, yeah, by all means, like we have uh, like this set up here, where we might have a propane heater inside. People can during the day come or night, whatever, and use the propane, stay warm. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. And it, is it is it okay to have a propane heater in, in there? Is it, with, is the, it with the proper ventilation, yes. Okay, yes. it's not dangerous. It's dangerous, of course, but um, we need obviously responsible, reasonable people to, to who are going to be there to, to watch it. You know what I mean? Um, 
I don't know. It's just even candles. If candles are generally accepted more, because like I mean, propane is for large areas, bigger spaces. This is pretty big. You know, there's we're gonna have lots of ventilation in there. And I'd imagine it'd be okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, also, like I mean. Obviously, you don't want to put your life at risk, right? Yeah, but they <laughs> do, they do have idea. small uh, <laughs> propane heaters built yeah. for inside of tents. Okay. Like just small ones without, they're not, they're flameless. They're just, they heat up a coil, yeah. kind of, yeah. and there's no actual exhaust release. Oh, you okay. do.